welcome to livealittlehigher.com. We're in the ninth attribute of the book of Tomer Devorah under the palm tree, uh, the 13 attributes of, of mercy of God. And, um, and this ninth attribute, it's called cast, cast all their sins into the depths of the sea. So the, 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 the definition of this attribute is that when a person sees the suffering of someone who has harmed him in the past, he should not rejoice over his adversary downfall or maintain his hatred. He should have mercy on that person and view him as a tzaddik since he has been purified by his sins by suffering. So what it means is that uh, if a person has to experience a suffering coming from someone else, it, this is, we already learned that it's not random, it's godly ordained. If you have to go through something, someone mistreated you, it comes from, from God to you. But eventually, the person that harms others, he's also going to suffer because, uh, you know, what goes around comes around and, 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 and the person is punished too. Like whatever you have to go through, you have to go through. But that person that is harming other people, he's also going to have to to clean the house. So what the, the attribute is telling us is that we should not rejoice when this other person is suffering. Uh, we should not say, oh, yeah, you see, he got what he deserved. Hashem pays everybody. We should not say that. We should not be happy for the suffering of other people. But we have to understand that there's a system, that Hashem creates a system. So when we see the suffering of those who have mistreated us and have mercy on them, we ourselves awaken Hashem's mercy towards the Jewish people. Despite our sins against Him, our suffering purifies us from our sins. This is something very important, that when a person is going through suffering, he's going through pain, it, this pain in itself is cleansing the person from his whatever things he did that were not okay. And Hashem deals kindly with us and he resigns his anger from us and casts it upon those who caused our suffering in order to destroy them. So let's explain this, um, this attribute. Uh, we can understand better in the light of the, of the Torah, the Torah's attitude towards a person that sins. And uh, for example, depending on the sin, uh, the base din, this is in the times of the temple where we had uh, where we had um, where we had this type of uh, retributions. This person had to be given forty lashes to 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 clean and repent and do uh, and to be a person that's able to be pardoned. So he shall be whipped within the number of forty, and we're not allowed to add more whips. This is it. This is the what this person has to get for whatever he did. So we don't add and we don't subtract also. We give him what, what it's needed to be given to him in order for him to be able to cleanse his sin. And, um, and it says, uh, because we cannot add because we don't want our brother to be degraded in our eyes. And this verse before he's whipped, he's called a wicked person. And he's whipped, he's called your brother. So before he's whipped, he's a wicked person. He committed a sin and he's going to pay for it. But after he went through the punishment, he's called your brother. So our sages conclude from here that after he has received his due punishment, his sins are absolved and he returns to the fold as brotherhood. Like he's forgiven 100%. In God's eyes, this person did nothing wrong. Like he's perfect. He starts new. So throughout the history of our nation, the same pattern repeats itself again and again and again and again. And we're going through it again in 2024. We're going through the same story in which the Jewish people sin against God and Hashem brings cruel adversaries against them. And, um, and then the Jewish people go into Teshuvah and we, we repent and we have remorse and we repent and we change our ways and we're forgiven. And then Hashem comes and, and, and we say, one well, would think that that's enough, that Hashem would come and rescue the Jewish people and that's it. But no, Hashem delivers us from their hand and then He punishes them for their hardships they inflicted on us. And we've seen it throughout history. We saw it with Pharaoh. 
We saw it with Haman, we saw it with Nebuchadnezzar, we saw it with the Roman Empire and the Greek Empire, and we saw it in every time that a nation or a people want to destroy the Jewish people. At the end, this is the story, it ends the same way every time. So this same pattern is reflected in the, in the Yom Kippur uh, service, in which the Kohen Gadol would arrange a lottery uh, between two identical goats, and this is very strange uh, practice that they had in the times of the Mishkan and the Temple, in which on Yom Kippur the, um, there would be these two two goats, and the Kohen Gadol would put one on the right and one on the left, and he would draw uh, a ballot, and um, and then he would say the one that was engraved the word Hashem, and the other one would be engraved to Asasim. So the, the one that brought out Hashem, that goat would be sacrificed in the Beit HaMittash, it would be an offering for God. The other God that came with the name Asasem, that would be the drum, uh, and uh, the Kohen would take him to the, to the desert and he would throw him into a cliff, and that goat would like fall down the cliff and die, okay? Horrible, horrible, horrible. You're, you're gonna be saying, what is Margie talking about? This is horrific, right? But we have to understand what this uh, represents. So we already learned that when a Jewish person does a, an Avera, does a sin, is sinful, he creates a, 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 a bad angel. You create a, 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 a negative angel. You create something bad, okay? You bring something that is not good to the world. You, you create a bad angel. And it's called a destructive angel. So when a person does Teshuvah, when a sinner does Teshuvah, he needs to destroy this accuser, this angel. And if he doesn't uh, uh, destroy this accuser, then this person is gonna be suffering all his life. So since the, this destructive angel was created by his, the person's sin, which is a person that did something that goes against the Torah, uh, then the very existence of this uh, angel that was created that is a destructive angel is not wanted. And the Torah, the intent of, of, of this whole uh, ceremony of the Asasen is to destroy this, um, this uh, negative uh, angel. So when the sinner returns in Teshuvah, as the Torah prescribes, the destructive angel he created is destroyed and the world is repaired of the harm caused by its existence. So there are three stages to Teshuvah. There's three steps into, into doing Teshuvah. The first one is that you have to, to have remorse. Obviously, a person has to feel bad about what he did. This is called the Jewish guilt, obviously. It's not something that is bad. If a person doesn't feel remorse for his actions, then he can never correct himself. So remorse is something that is healthy to the point that you don't become depressed about it, right? But you have to have that inner feeling, okay, there's something very bad here. I did something terrible. I have to, I have to fix it. Then the person has to confess verbally what he did. And then he has to accept the suffering that he's going to have to go through to atone, to absolve his sin. And we learned this from David, the King David, who prayed, generously clean, cleanse me from my transgressions. And David prayed that Hashem may cleanse him, and he willingly accepted the suffering necessary to achieve spiritual purity. Although suffering can be a great spiritual advantage to a person, we still pray, erase what I have seen before you in your great mercy, but not through bad suffering or sickness. Like we understand that when you do something, you have to fix it. There's nothing you can do. If a person did something bad to someone else, you have to go up to that person and fix whatever you did. Ask forgiveness, eh, do something special for the person. You know, it, it creates, it's, it's hum humbling, it's, it, it's, it's humiliating, you know, to accept that a person did something wrong. But on the other hand, these feelings are the ones that really cleanse a person. And we pray that we might only endure suffering of love, that we feel that Hashem is not doing things to us that are so bad, so bad for cleansing whatever we did, that we can't, we can't 
be good people in the world and learn Torah and do mitzvot and, and, and be productive. So when we say immediately after the Ashamu confession in, in Yom Kippur, we say, you are just in all that befalls me, and we, we, we willingly accept suffering upon ourselves to cleanse our sins. And so when we accept that the suffering that we, we live, the suffering that we have to go through, is really a cleansing process that is cleaning us from our dirt. And so Hashem throws our sins into the depths of the sea, destroying the destructive angel, angel entirely. So this, um, this ceremony of the Azazel, which is, um, is, a, is, is done, it was done in the times of the temples on Yom Kippur. Today, we don't do this anymore. We don't have temples, but we read it during Yom Kippur. What it, it, it's saying is that the, 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 the Satan is an instrument of God that Hashem uses in this world to, to, to achieve something that he needs. So sometimes horrible things happen through us that we don't want, like, why was I the one that was the instrument for this suffering for another person? It's, you have to ask yourself, okay, I, I'm vulnerable to fall into these traps of being the bad person in the story. You have to learn and you have to study and you have to refine yourself not to be this instrument. But what it's saying here is that the instrument, Pharaoh, Haman, today we can call it Hamas, you know, Hezbollah, all these uh, forces that are in the world that are really satanic and they are instruments of Hashem. This is what's crazy. They are instruments of Hashem that Hashem brings to the world to make a Jew do Teshuvah. That's the whole purpose of it. And then the crazy thing is, is that the Jewish people get purified and this, this, uh, this force that is an instrument of God gets punished. So, so we see that once the Bathsheba has been purified of his sin, the whole reason for this angel's existence is gone entirely. They disappear. There, there, there is no need for them anymore. They're, they're gone. It disappears. So, so we see that uh, that we see that with this we can answer the question where what does killing the goat accomplish? And the answer is that the goat represents the punishment we must we must receive. So it's a kapara. It's a kapara. The goat takes it for us. Whatever was meant for us that we were gonna be thrown out off the cliff and broken into little pieces because of what we did, we don't we 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 survived this and we are redeemed and we are forgiven and we can go on with our lives happily ever after and this goat takes it, takes, takes it for us. So therefore the goat, the enemy who persecutes us is sent to a barren west, west, wasteland and destroyed. So there's a very interesting uh, dream, this is an example from the Tanakh, there's a very interesting dream of the Nebuchadnezzar who was the Babylonian king that destroyed uh, the first temple and it says that before the destruction of the first Beit HaMikdash, many of the Torah scholars of Yehuda were exiled to Babylonia. And among them were a group of Jewish young people, Jew, youth, the most famous of whom were Daniel, Daniel the prophet Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. And they risked their lives to remain loyal to the Torah and to Hashem. And so during that period, Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylonia, woke one morning, disturbed by a very frightful dream that he was un unable to remember. And he called his advisors, the great wizards and necromancers of his kingdom, and demanded that they reveal to him both the content of the dream and its explanation. And these advisors, advisors with all their knowledge and strange and mystical were Un, un, utterly baffled, and enraged by their failure, they could not uh, tell the king what was going on. So they called this youth, these Jewish kids, uh, which was in, in, within them was Daniel, and they fasted, they prayed to God to help them, and in the middle of the night, Hashem revealed to Daniel the dream of Nebuchadnezzar and its meaning. He not only showed him the dream, he showed him what it meant. So Daniel then stepped forward and revealed it to Nebuchadnezzar. 
And as soon as he began to describe the dream, Nebuchadnezzar instantly remembered that Daniel's revelation was correct. So what was this famous dream? Nebuchadnezzar saw a giant fearsome statue with a gold head, a silver chest, and arms. The stomach was made out of bronze and the thighs, and the legs and the feet were made of iron. The legs were iron and the feet were made out of clay. So then there was a stone that struck this statue and shattered it into pieces, as small as a shaft which were swept away by the wind until nothing at all was left of it, and no rem remembrance of it remained. The stone that destroyed it then grew until it became a giant mountain that filled the entire earth. Daniel then explained to Nebuchadnezzar the meaning of this dream. The statue represented the kingdoms that would arise one after another to oppress the people of Israel, Ben Israel. The golden head was Nebuchadnezzar himself, and the kingdom of Babylonia. After the fall of Babylonia, the Pers Persian Empire would arise, represented by the silver chest. Afterwards would come Greece, represented by the bronze stomach. Then would come two empires, which would rule the world at once, vi 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 vying for power. This would be Edom, represented by metal, and Ishmael, represented by clay. So this Ishmael is the one that we're dealing with now. It's clay, it's nothing. It, it's, it's really nothing. It, if you throw water in it, it's gonna melt. So at the end of days, a stone represented Mashiach will arise and destroy all these kingdoms. And then the kingship of Hashem will be revealed throughout the world. As if in a dream, the nations that oppressed Ben Israel will be swept away like a shaft, as if they never were. I hope this is soon in our days. So something beautiful that, that is explained in this book of uh, Tomer de Moran in the elucidations, it says that on Southern night, when we commemorate the exodus from Egypt and thank Hashem for the redemption that the Jewish people experienced in those days, uh, there's a, a song that is at the end of the, of the Seder called Hat Gadian. And this song is based on our sages teaching that there are 10 kingdoms which have ruled or will rule over the world. So one is the creator, Hashem, then comes Nimrod, Pharaoh, Shlomo, Nebuchadnezzar, Ahasuerosh, Greece, Rome, Mashiach, and fin finally it will go back to God, to the creator. And so the, the, the Had Gadia describes how some kingdoms rise subjugate the Jewish people, and then they fall. They fall to the kingdom, and then the new kingdom arises. And finally, the kingdom of Mashiach comes, and, and, and it redeems all the Jewish people. It's a, it's a time of, of, of peace in the world, of goodness and peace, no sickness, no poverty, no wars. And, and then this kingdom of Mashiach is the one that prepares the people, the righteous people of the world and the Jewish people to be restored forever and, and the, the, the glory of Hashem is going to be restored forever. So we're in the process. Uh, we're in the process. This is what's going on in the world right now. Uh, this is what's going on. So the Jewish people have to be strong. And we have to continue. We have to continue being who we are, be proud of who we are. We should really live a life in which we forgive everybody for whatever they do to us. Don't hold grudges. Don't be upset. Uh, exercise your mercy. And in this way, we will eventually come to the fulfillment of, of what Hashem desires for the world. So remember, live a little higher. Thank you.